I'm going to share a dream I had on Tuesday, just a few nights ago. This dream is unquestionably a warning to Christians in South Africa. By some method or means, the enemy of God is plotting to come and kill Christians and to steal and seize their properties. But, as this dream shows, they are very likely to fail if the Christians will pray. This is the man from Modesto, and here is the dream I received. The dream starts out immediately in this landscape with high grass and a lot of trees, a lot of greenery, but the grass is dry at this time. It's yellow, dry grass, very high grass like this. My wife and I have come to this place, and we have a tent. It's a standard A-frame tent. You know, you got two poles at either end, a couple of stakes at the corners, and we're sleeping in this tent. So she and I, we go to bed in the tent, and in the morning we wake up, and my wife turns to me and says, I had a dream. What was it? I saw three men were plotting to come and kill us and take our things. So these three men represent, this is a symbol I've seen many times in, my 25, in the 25 years since I received the gift of dreaming, and it represents Satan, the unholy spirit, and the son of Satan, these three. These three represent evil, the forces of evil, and any men who might be aligned with those, with those evil spirits, right? So this is the dream she had. And when she tells me, I say, and all this is taking place in a dream. And I say, we have to tell this dream to someone. So the dream immediately switches to, we have arrived at a place where some Christians gather and a large man, he's a large African man, he's got big, strong shoulders. And I, for some reason, I just wanna say that he's 48 years old, this guy. And he comes up and he greets us. He's kind of serious, almost seems like a bodyguard or someone who definitely puts himself in between any visitors and this pastor who he then agrees to take us to see. So this pastor is a, an older African man. His hair is 50% to uh, two thirds white and he's very relaxed. He's seated and he's very comfortable and we're given seats and we tell, my wife tells him the dream and he says, this is interesting, but I don't feel that it's something I need to take to my people. Thank you, have a good day. So we say, okay, and we leave. The second night, we go to sleep in the tent, and I, this time, I receive a dream, and this is what I see. Uh, the camera comes in, and again, I see this landscape with the tall, dry grass and these big uh, canopied trees, but there's also other types of trees and a lot of greenery, right? But there's like spots of greenery mixed with these large areas of dry grass, and it comes in and it shows our tent, and I recognize, oh, that's the tent where my wife and I are sleeping. Then the camera pans along and we pass a large area of some dry grass and then we get to an area where there's a small area, a grove of trees. And in this grove of trees, I see a cheetah lying on her side and she lifts her head and growls at us. And then I see that, I observe it and I don't think much of it and the camera moves on and we pass another big area of grass and some more trees. And I'm not sure how much landscape really passes. And then we arrive to another place and I see another tent. It's exactly, well, it's very much like ours in that it's an A-frame tent. It's oriented maybe a little differently than ours, but there are three men there. Now this is at night. My wife and I, we're already sleeping, but these men are awake and they're talking. And they say, listen, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna go and we're gonna kill those Christians and we're gonna take their things. And they say, yes, yes, yes. And they all agree with one another. That's a good idea, that's a good idea. Well, that's what we're gonna do. And then one of the men says, but it's too early in the night to go do it now. We need to wait for a later hour. So what we'll do is uh, we'll go to sleep now for a few hours and we'll get up and then we'll go and we'll kill them and take their things. They say, okay, that's great, let's do that. So all three men get into the tent and the, the camera view circles around a little bit so that now I'm looking directly at the flap of their tent. And some time passes and then the flap of the tent opens. The out steps the first of the three men and he is a mixed race man. He's, he has parentage from Africa and also parentage probably from Europe. And uh, so he's a light-skinned African man and he steps out and this man, he's wearing a blue shirt. It's all blue, one piece. And at this point I noticed, and I, I didn't see it at first, and I think it maybe wasn't there the first time. And he steps out and in front of him immediately, I mean, maybe like 
literally one and a half steps, maybe only one pace away from, the, from where he stands up outside the tent, there is now uh, the edge of a cliff. And right along the edge of this cliff is, are some fence posts, and there are three runs of barbed wire crossing this fence. Along the fence posts are three runs of barbed wire, like you might see closing in some cattle. This fence represents prayers that have been put up by people against evil works. And these, this fence has now appeared to restrain them. This guy stands up, he stretches, he doesn't see it at all. He takes one step forward, his foot goes over the cliff, and he slips under the fence and goes over the cliff and plummets into darkness. And I don't see him. And he doesn't make any noise. I don't see him land, nothing. Just whoop, he's gone. A short moment passes and out steps the next guy. This guy is a short, is a little bit pudgy, thick built guy. He's uh, shorter than the others. And he's got uh, also bigger hair, but he's a white man. And this man, he also looks around, maybe for the other guy. And he takes one step forward. And just like the first man, whoop, just falls right over this cliff into darkness and is gone. Uh, then the third man steps out. He's, a, he's the tallest of the three. He's a tall, dark-skinned African man, and he's wearing a red shirt. So uh, the mixed-race guy, first guy, blue shirt. The white guy, yellow shirt. And now this dark African man, red shirt. I don't know the significance of the shirts, but those are the shirts. This guy, just like the two before him, steps forward and whoop, goes over the cliff. So that, is, that ends the dream, and I wake up. So that ends the dream within a dream. Now, still in the dream, I wake up and I turn to my wife and I say, wow, I had the same dream you had with all this detail. And she says, then let us go in, she said, let us go into the forest and commune with God. And I said, yes, let's do that. So we go for a walk and we enter into the forest and my wife says, listen, I hear a waterfall. I said, I hear it too. She said, that would be a great place for us to go and pray against these things. And I said, yeah, I agree. I said, well, I didn't really care where we prayed, but I, but I agreed. And we went and we find this falls and we look over the falls and we see there's a pool of water at the bottom and we see the three men from my dream all floating there in the water, all dead. And I said, wow. I said, the dream is fulfilled. We certainly need now to return to the man we told the first dream and tell him that the dream has been fulfilled, that I have the same dream and it's fulfilled. So we return, uh, the same guy leads us in, and we see this old African pastor. And he listens carefully, and then he turns to me and he said, he said, now my people need to hear this. He said, I'm going to put you on the radio. So he takes me a little further up this hill behind him, and at the top of this hill, he has a radio station, and he hands me a microphone that looks like a little white kind of a, a conical thing. It was an unusual type of a microphone. I haven't seen one before. And he says, you're on the air. Tell the people what God has shown you. And so I begin to preach, and I share that my wife had a dream, and then I share that I had a dream. And I'm telling people, I say, and I had this dream, and it's already fulfilled. And I begin to tell the dream. And when I come to the part where I say that the second man fell out, a man who is sitting there, who I, I'm thinking is maybe a member of the church of this old pastor who has put me on his radio program. And this guy comes up and he says, hey, don't say that this uh, light-skinned man, uh, don't say that he was mixed race. Say that he was an Arab. Say that he's a Middle Easterner. And I say, no, that's not true. I said, the man was absolutely a mixed race man of African and European descent, and he was not a Middle Easterner. And I think that this was just something that God put into the dream so that there, there could be no confusion about the origins or the nature of this man, so that he can't be confused for a terrorist, you know, or a Muslim or something else, but that it's just a man. And I'll get to, I'll get to the the colors of the men later, why it's important. The man who led us up, this big 48 year old strong muscly guy, he comes over and he very politely, gently leads that guy back to the seating. And then I start telling and I say that, you know, these people all fell. And another man stands up and he comes and he says, hey, you didn't say how far they fell. And what's interesting is, is that in the dream, I have no idea how far they fell. And only at this point I say, they fell seven stories, no more and no less. 
And the guy says, you didn't say that before. I said, I did say that before. They fell seven stories. And he said, okay. And, and the same guy comes out and leads that guy back to the seating area. And now as I'm preaching, I start pacing back and forth. And there's this area covered in stone, which represents standing on the rock. So at this point, I'm in the Holy Spirit. In the dream, the dream is showing that I'm in the Holy Spirit. And I turn back and I see back behind this man that there's this large white building. It's three stories high. It has a rectangular footprint and it's painted beautifully white. However, at the bottom floor, I can see that some people have begun, they've put in some poles and they're putting up some plywood and they're starting to build other rooms. They're starting to build onto this building. And as I see that, I'm preaching into the microphone and I say, and now the Holy Spirit is on me and I see the building that God has built for you and I see that you are trying to add to what God has given you and you do not need to add. What God has given you is sufficient. Do not add to what God gave you. And as I'm saying this, all of those works disappear and I see how beautiful the building is standing alone. It looks much nicer without the things that the men had added to it. So this was a message in the dream to the church in South Africa saying, do not add to what God has given you. What God gave you is sufficient. Do not add to it. And when you remove what you've added, you will see how beautiful God's work truly is. It was painted all white. It had columns. And on the sides of the doors, it was painted red. On the sides of the windows, even the windows, it was painted red, just like the blood of the lamb on the doorposts of our heart when we receive Jesus. So as I preach that, and then I turn back to walk the other way, and I see now, here come all of these women. They're wearing uh, white uniforms, and they have black uh, hash marks on the sides here and down near the bottom, and they have in the middle, they have a number. And I realize these women are running a race, and they come up the hill, and I'm preaching, and I see them, and one of the women kind of moves around me a little bit, and the man, the African pastor, he says, don't get in the way of these women while you are preaching. They are running an important race. Don't interfere with them. After praying, I understand that this is a, a teaching that they have uh, in this church. So this man is saying, don't interfere with the women. Let them be. Don't interfere with the people who are running the race to see Christ. Their uniforms are white, not the standard uniform. And the... But, and at this point, when I see the women running, I see how determined they are on the determination in their face. I see their strength. And I see that some of them, some of them, some of them are tired. Some of them are tired. All of these women in this race, I don't know why, are all white women. So I see African men in the dream, and I see a white women. But I don't see white men, and I don't see African women in this dream. I don't know why. So the women come running up. And the African man says, don't interfere with these men, women. And what he's saying is, don't burden the women with extra teachings. Don't do anything to stumble them in their race. Whatever God gave, it's sufficient. So again, it's kind of underscoring this particular message about don't add to what God has given. Don't add to it. He says, don't get in their way. And so I, I move to a place where I'm not going to interfere with them as they are running up this hill. And so the hill itself even kind of represents this passage in scripture that says to stand upon a hill and wave a flag that everyone can see that this is where the teachings of Christ are, that this is where you come to know Jesus and that we are going to teach you Jesus here, to yell loudly that people will know that Jesus is a place to come, a safe place. That pretty much ends the dream, right? The meaning of the dream is clear. So when I first came and told the dream to the African pastor, uh, he said that they would pray. That was one of the things he said. He said, my people will pray about this. And so the prayers were put up. When my wife had the dream, she said, we need to pray about this. Uh, when I told my wife the dream, she again said, let us go into nature and commune with God, and we're going to pray about this. And the message is saying that we need to pray, not just the Christians in South Africa, but Christians all over the world, because the enemy is like a lion, and in South Africa, he's like the cheetah. So the cheetah just was there basically to show that the dream takes place in South Africa. And there was something about the uniforms of the women running the race that showed that it was also in South Africa. The landscape also showed that it was in South Africa. Now, why were the three men, uh, an African, a mixed race man, and a white man? It's to emphasize that it's not any particular group that's gonna come against the church. You don't need to fear the dark-skinned Africans. You don't need to fear people of mixed descent. You don't need to fear the white man. 
It's evil. They are only representative. If the dream had used all dark-skinned African men or all white men, then the dream might be misinterpreted, misconstrued to mean we ought to fear this skin color. Skin color has nothing to do with it. It's about evil. It's about evil. This is the man from Modesto reminding you as always, and especially relevant to this message, to pray or be defeated because it is this prayer that's going to defeat the enemy. And the dream, at the end of the dream that I received, within the dream, there was that three barbed wire, there was that three runs of barbed wire in that fence, and it was the prayers of the people constraining him. This is a very widely used symbolism, a wall, a barrier, a hedge, a fence, preventing the enemy from coming out. And in this place, there's also one more relevant scripture that the Bible says, that if a man goes out to lay a snare for the people of God, that he's gonna fall into that snare himself. So let the evil people fall into the traps they have set for my brothers, for my sisters in Christ, and let us, and as for our family, let us be blessed and let the, God, let the blessings of our Father in heaven fall upon us. Pray or be defeated.